Well, let's uh, get uh, more on this now. We can speak to Michael Dodd, a former political correspondent uh, for the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, Michael, did this come as a shock result to you? Not really, no. I think after uh, several years of uh, the Labor government where you've had Kevin Rudd versus Julia Gillard fighting each other uh, all the time, uh, disunified governments in Australia don't have a record of surviving and it became inevitable that uh, in the last few weeks at least uh, that uh, Tony Abbott would get there. Well, there's been a lot of infighting, hasn't there, in Labor, and, and presumably a lot of people, a lot of voters, started to lose confidence. In Absolutely. I mean, Australians play politics incredibly rough. People here in Britain might think it gets a bit rough uh, between uh, Labour and Conservative, but in Australia they play it really rough, and the Australian Labour Party in particular play it incredibly rough, and they're quite open in their disunity quite often, and uh, Kevin Rudd has paid the price for that. It probably wasn't, uh, as a defeat goes, as bad as it might have been if Julia Gillard had stayed on. I think Kevin Rudd probably is getting some credit within the Labour Party for uh, actually limiting the damage. It hasn't been a massive swing to Tony Abbott, but it's been enough. Is it fair to say that that's what won it for Tony Abbott, the infighting in Labour? I think that made it certain, yeah. I mean, uh, the real issue was competent government. And uh, when you've got a government that's at war with itself, um, it can't really expect to last. Interestingly, uh, Kevin Rudd, uh, after the defeat, said that uh, he would give uh, his own party, 9 out of 10 for governing the country. Some people might dispute that, but he said 0 out of 10 for governing themselves. And I think everybody inside and outside the Labour Party agree with that, and that made it easy for Tony Abbott. Um, I mean, Tony Abbott's quite a, a kind of volatile character, colourful character, but he has become more disciplined, and he kept enough discipline on himself and on his own team to well, get past the line. Well, I want to talk more about uh, Tony Abbott. Uh, you are among many journalists that have had a lot of fun with him uh, over <laughs> the years, uh, particularly some of the newspapers as well. He's, he's got an awful lot of uh, nicknames. Just tell us a bit more about the man who once wanted to become a monk. Yeah, the mad monk. He never actually made it as a monk. He started studying as a monk. But a lot of Australians calling that, don't they? The they do. Monk. They do. And, you know, there is something kind of slightly wild and unpredictable about him. Um, you know, he's a, a sort of solid Catholic. Uh, he did take a very hard line on abortion although he's also pragmatic and he's less hardline on abortion now than he used to be and uh, he's quite colourful uh, for example and he used to be a journalist so he's not all bad uh, but uh, and he had the support of the Murdoch, uh, pa Murdoch yeah, Papers yeah and that helped Australia a lot and there's this, been a lot of yeah. criticism of the Murdoch Papers for being slightly less than even handed Rupert Murdoch himself has been uh, tweeting uh, about the death of the government and he's obviously smiling about it uh, but uh, Tony Abbott um, I suppose best known before he became uh, an elected politician he actually led the campaign to to keep Australia as a monarchy, um, to keep us uh, in uh, a situation where we had the Queen as the head of state. And, uh, and that's quite controversial in Australia, but uh, he did uh, a surprisingly good job, I think, of actually uh, tapping into conservative feeling on that. Uh, and then as uh, a minister, I mean, he was always colourful. Uh, you know, he's a fitness fanatic. Uh, he runs triathlons. He uh, appears in public in uh, his little speedos, which show a lot of the male anatomy, which is a bit controversial in some places. Uh, you know, he is... Uh, unpredictable uh, and uh, I think one thing you can predict is that we're going to have an unpredictable ride for three years. And um, Labour licking their wounds after defeat but uh, their, their, tr their troubles are far from over. There's now an inquiry into what went wrong and they've got to pick a new leader. Yeah, I think uh, Ed Miliband's troubles here in Britain are, are pretty small in comparison with Labour's in Australia. Um, they've got to pick a new leader. One fortunate thing for them is that uh, of the, uh, the, the leading government ministers, uh, none of them actually lost their seat in the end. A lot of people thought that they would go under, but uh, Kevin Rudd, by actually limiting the damage, has managed to keep on uh, the younger ministers. So there is a bit of a field to choose from, but whoever gets it is going to have a really tough job uh, because uh, you know it has been a, such a disunified party. Bringing it together will be a challenge. Michael, always a pleasure. Michael Dodd, thank you for, uh, for coming in.